Hello, I'm Kevin Hughes. I'm a priest with the Milho Missionaries. I've been working for two years in Kenya, 14 years in North Cameroon, three years in Uganda, and I've also been out working in Malaysia and the Philippines. I'm currently involved with Missio, the Red Boxes, and I'm based in the Mill Hill House in Maidenhead. What I hope to do is to do a series of short talks on what is mission. Mission is what? Because we're a missionary organisation. So when we talk about mission, what are we talking about? And we're going to be hopefully studying Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation, the joy of the gospel, Evangelii Gaudium. <laughs> Missionary outreach is, Pope Francis reminds us, paradigmatic of the church's activity. Big word, paradigmatic. What he means is that when the church gets up in the morning and puts on her glasses, the glasses to view the world is mission. How do we share with our brothers and sisters the good news of Jesus Christ? I'm currently involved with Missio, which is the church's missionary organisation. So, what is mission? First and foremost, mission is about passion. Passion for Jesus and passion for his people. We are to be passionate people. Passionately engaged in our relationship with Christ and passionately committed to sharing the faith, the relationship with Jesus Christ that gives us life. When we talk about mission as a church, we often go to St. Matthew's Gospel, the very end of St. Matthew's Gospel, when the risen Lord gathers his disciples for the last time and he ascends into heaven. And what the risen Lord says to them is, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them all that I've taught you and know that I am with you always. Yes, even to the end of time. And as a church, we've done that. We've done really well indeed. We have gone out to all nations. We've done the baptizing and we've done the teaching. But we haven't really made disciples. And the object is not to baptize or to teach or even to travel around the world. It is to make disciples. And for Pope Francis, the notion of discipleship is central but also we are called to be missionary disciples. And in Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, Francis wants to share with us his vision of mission, his vision of the church. And the title, the joy of the gospel, has a two sense meaning. The first sense is the joy of having a relationship with Jesus Christ the joy of living the good news, but also the joy of sharing the good news. These series of talks will be a little iceberg, just, you know, we're just going to be scratching the surface. It's no substitute for reading Evangelii Gaudium. And Evangelii Gaudium is a beautiful exhortation. It's not as such the Pope teaching, but of course he is the Pope. He is teaching, but rather he's trying to encourage us. Encourage us to get out and proclaim the good news. In 2012, the bishops had a synod where they talked about as their subject the new evangelization for the transmission of the Christian faith. And as is traditional, the bishops get together, they pray, they discuss. I'm sure they argue in Becker as well. What is the best way to proclaim 
that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour in the 21st century. And what they do is they get together, they discuss, they write down and they present to the Pope the final document. And the Pope takes it away, reads it, prays about it, corrects it, and then produces a document, normally an exhortation, but sometimes an encyclical. And this he presents to the church. And Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, is Pope Francis's presentation to the church. How do we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour in the 21st century? And in this document, Francis first of all warns us. He tells us that we must never forget that God's word is unpredictable. Unpredictable in its power. The gospel speaks of a seed which is sown and once it's sown, it grows by itself. And we who have sown the seed, we sleep, we carry on with life, we carry on living, but the seed is growing. And the seed is the responsibility of God. It's not our responsibility. And when the harvest is ready, it's decided by God. And the church has to accept this unruly freedom of the world. That we are not in charge of the harvest. Rather, God is. We are here to do what the word of God wants. The word of God is not here to do what we want. And in our faith, in living out our relationship with Christ, it, it, it's quite simple. It's about if and then. If we truly believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, if he has conquered sin and death, if he is risen from the dead, then how does it change our life? Mission is about passion. We are to be passionately engaged with Christ. We are to be passionately engaged with his people. But for Francis, joy and mercy are equally important. We are to be a merciful people, but we are to be a joyful people as well. We are to live our lives in the joy of the risen Lord. And our joy is not a happy clappy, oh, I'm not aware of what's going on joy. Rather, our joy is the joy of the empty tomb, of the women who gather upset, distressed, distraught. And they find out that Jesus is alive. He is risen. And this fact changes their life. It changes everything about them. Our joy is the joy of Pentecost. When the Spirit of God comes down in tongues of fire and the community who have been frightened and scared burst out of the upper room and they go out and they stand courageously in the middle of the city and they proclaim that Jesus is alive. Jesus Christ is risen. Pope Benedict in his first encyclical Deus caritas est, God is love, reminds us that our source of joy is Christ. He tells us that being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or, or a lofty philosophical idea, rather it's about an encounter with Christ. And this encounter with Christ opens for us a new horizon and gives us a new direction. Joy in our relationship with Christ is one of the key elements of the Bishop's Conference of Aparecida. Aparecida is a large basilica in Brazil. It is the largest Marian shrine in the world. It has over 10 million pilgrims every year. And the bishops of South America had their meeting in Aparecida and Pope Francis, when he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires, was one of the guiding lights and organisers. And in many ways, the Aparecida document is the blueprint for Pope Francis's pontificate. 
And the bishops in a parasida, they met in the basilica. And Pope Francis says it was one of the most moving experiences he ever had. He said the bishops were there and we were talking and praying and all the time we could hear the pilgrims outside praying the rosary. And we celebrated the mass every day with the pilgrims. And he said it was nice for us as pastors to remember that we had to have the smell of the sheep in our nostrils. And one of the most important ideas of a parasita, which Pope Francis has brought forward into Evangelii Gaudium, is the notion of missionary disciples. In the encounter with Christ, the bishops say, we want to express the joy of being disciples of the Lord and the joy of having received the treasure of the gospel. Having received the gospel is not a burden, rather it is a gift. 